Hello and welcome to another podcast. I'm John Donoghue from HealingCoursesOnline.com and with me again I'm delighted to welcome back Graham Goff from County Meath in Ireland and today we'll be talking about uh, bioenergy. So tell me Graham when you got an interest, it's many many years ago you took an interest in bioenergy and decided to do the ocean bioenergy training course. What, what was the first thing that you, you thought of when you decided you'd like to learn about bioenergy? A couple of years previous I, I did a course in integrated energy therapy which I found absolutely amazing and uh, it just sort of led me on down to the bioenergy therapy for some reason something just really resonated with me with the bioenergy I studied a bit about it, went on to Google just see if I could get as much information as I could and noticed that it could really help a lot of serious disease like cancer, MS, different things like that. I just found that very, very interesting to do that in a very natural way. A question that, that, that I ask and that, that I know a lot of people would ask is, is it similar to Reiki or what is the difference between bioenergy and Reiki, or the difference between ocean bioenergy, I should say, and, and Reiki? Well, Reiki is a very powerful form of therapy as well. Uh, it, would, it would be very good, we'll say, a work on the overall body, the overall energy field. Whereas the bioenergy, you can pinpoint certain diseases, the certain illnesses. So during a bioenergy session, the client will get a full immune system boost and then you can go straight on to whatever the specific issue is. Let it be depression, let it be cancer, let it be sports injuries, shoulder issues, back problems, anything like that at all. The bioenergy will then pinpoint certain areas so during the session we could spend maybe a half an hour on a particular injury or a particular illness and ailment as well. If I can ask you about bioenergy as opposed to energy therapy. Bioenergy therapy, um, I was just reading up about it prior to you coming on, that bio is life energy. It's life, I presume, life force energy. Yes, yes. So our bodies have, have a life force. Yeah. We're, we're energy. We are all energy anyway, aren't we? Yeah. We all work on frequency and vibration. Yeah. So we do. that's what the whole build-up of our body is made of. And so our, our energy bodies, we have physical body, we have a physical energy field. Mental energy fields. And when we're working with the bioenergy, it's important to sort of delve into each of them fields. Okay. Because an emotional issue can eventually manifest into the physical body. So if we can work on, we'll say, the emotional level of the body. Maybe we're preventing something later on down the road from manifesting into the physical body. Which I presume you have a physical body and then what? Emo emotional? We have physical, emotional, mental layers, mm. different layers to the body. And basically what bioenergy does, if there's blockages in any of them layers, the bioenergy helps to unblock the blockages and then our own life force energy takes over and it does all the healing work for us. That's very interesting because uh, I've heard people saying that a certain person is a great healer or somebody else is a great healer, but, but you're actually saying that, that the healing comes from inside, the healing, yes. it's the body that heals itself. Yes, without a doubt. All forms of disease and illness is a blockage in the energy field, have an emotional, mental, physical level. And what the bioenergy does is we just un try and unblock the blockages in the client's energy field and then the client's own natural healing takes place it, it kicks in then and looks after the rest okay so the healing basically comes from within so if you're doing a, a bioenergy session with somebody who has a particular illness the idea is to uh, activate the body's own inner healing process exactly. is that what is that what's actually happening that's exactly it some cases it can cause it can come from an emotional problem so we can work on the emotional area of the energy field and other cases it can be physical it can come from different areas but with the bioenergy we just work on trying to clear all the blockages 
So if you're working on the emotional body, I presume that's the chakras. Yeah. 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 So tell me, tell me what are chakras? Chakras are, we have seven main chakras in okay. our body. So we have the root, the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the third eye and the crown. Okay. And sometimes these chakras can get un can blocked. So with the bioenergy, we try and unblock. Again, they have different levels, different layers out, emotional, mental layers. So if you can try and unblock the blockages and it releases then the, the pent up emotions that's held in the body. We'll say if somebody has problems in the area of the heart, it, it, what you're saying is that it may be an emotional issue, in which yes. case you work on, I presume, the, the, the heart. heart chakra. Yes. Yeah. And if someone that experiences a lot of grief, a lot of loss in their life throughout the years, the heart chakra can get blocked up and we just try and help unblock the chakra and then just get the whole energy system just moving back to the way it should be, the way it was made to be initially and so the by working on the the, the chakra for the the, the heart yeah. you're working on the emotional issues that may be causing a physical problem is exactly, that exactly exactly sometimes emotional blockage can manifest into the physical body so especially around we we'll say the solar plexus area mm. where you have the solar plexus chakra if someone's solar plexus chakra isn't in a good place it can affect the organs in the area and a lot of cases, people that would have the likes of irritable bowel syndrome, digestive trouble, things like that. Mm -hmm. It can just be a chakra imbalance. So if we can just release the blockage in the chakra, and a lot of cases, the digestive system starts to fix itself then. So and let's assume that somebody has um, fears right, a lot of fears or they've had shocks as a result of an accident, yeah. is it possible then that one of the other chakras yeah. would get blocked? The root chakra, I was speaking to a man recently who had a car crash and he knows a lot of constipation, which he didn't know where it came from. Okay. So I explained from then that the root chakra, when he felt the impact, he didn't realise it was coming. So the root chakra is to do, the emotional is a uh, fears, deep fears, things like that. And when he got the hit from behind, it was a total shock to the system. And the whole system just tightened up. And that's what caused the constipation. Did I read someplace about, with regards to the throat chakra, that if the throat chakra is blocked, then it inhibits somebody's ability to, to speak out and be more yeah. um, chatty and more uh, I suppose to to express themselves and so exactly, on. Exactly, exactly, and it's so important. Even people that were at funerals or things like that, we all went through where we're trying not to cry, and yes. you start choking up, choking and up. that's just suppressing the throat chakra. You're not expressing how you feel, mm -hmm. and in a lot of cases that can turn into thyroid issues and things like that also. Right. Okay. So one thing can lead on to another yeah. at a physical level yeah. if if there is emotional blocks yeah. and this is where the chakra clearing comes yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Um, just talking about the chakras, uh, am I right in saying that, that each chakra has its own colour and its own key? Different keys and each key. So for the root chakra, we have the key of C, the key of D, the solar plexus, you have E, mm -hmm. the heart chakra, you have F, the throat mm -hmm. chakra, you have A, F or Sorry, G, 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 I think it G, was. Yeah, yeah, I read, remember reading about that. The, the third eye is A and the crown chakra is B. Uh, different experiences, you yeah. know, working with people with... Vast amount of experiences with different types of disease and illness. Everything from cancer, uh, seeing tumour shrink, MS, uh, people who are pain free and it's just fascinating. Okay. Very, very powerful form of therapy. Okay. Any particular stories you, you, you could share with us? Uh, recently, I'm working with a dog, actually. And he has been to the vets, and the vet says that the liver and kidneys had more or less failed. They have been in a very bad way. So even after just a week and a half walk, the lady brought the dog back to the vet, and the kidneys are back working again. The liver is working again. 
yeah. and absolutely fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. So in fact, you're, you're, you're working on animals as well as humans. Yes, animals, anything with a pulse. <laughs> <laughs> anything with a pulse. And if the pulse is slowing down, it definitely needs exactly, some work. Exactly. Can you do distant healing? Yes, distant healing I do quite a lot of as well. So with distant healing, if I have a sample of hair, actually that work I'm doing with the dog is done yep. through distant healing. It's fantastic with animals, babies, and things like that. People that are housebound, that can't travel, yeah. and things yeah. like that. Okay. So if I have a sample of someone's hair, I bring it into the therapy room, and their DNA is in that hair. Okay. So I will just walk using the same, exact same protocols as okay. if the person was there in front of me. Okay. And I can walk around the whole energy field of the person just as if they're there. It's very powerful also. Wow. So if you're working on, let's assume you're working on a person uh, at a distance, th this is, I presume, somebody who can't make it to come to you or could be in another country yeah. or whatever the case may be. You can actually work on that person. Exactly. That's what distant healing is. Exactly. Once we agree a time that the client is lying down, because like ordinary bioenergy, you become very relaxing. So the client also has to be lying down in bed or at least sitting down while the session is going on. So just explain to me about that. Let's assume uh, we're in Ireland and yeah. you're, you're working in County Meads and you're about to do a distant healing session yeah. with somebody and they're living, say, in Perth in Australia. Yeah. So they, they're in a different time zone, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you saying that you synchronize that that if you're going to work, say, at 7 o'clock in the evening on this person, yeah. that at that moment, whether that's whatever time it is in Australia, it, it doesn't really matter the time it is in Australia, so that they're lying down, they must be lying down at the actual moment yes, that you're exactly. working on them here. Is exactly, that it? because there's, a, there's just such a, a lightning speed connection between me and the client. It okay. does not matter whereabouts in the world they are. As long as we agree on the time that they are lying down, as soon as I will start, they will start to feel the whole process happening. They will feel different sensations in their body, even though yeah. they're thousands of miles away. Yes. And it's, it's also very, very powerful. Very powerful. So you would have received a, a sample of hair or a photograph or both, preferably, yeah, I presume. Yeah, I would receive that. And we would have a chat prior to the session and we just go through the whole process, what ailments, diseases the person has, and uh, we agree the time then, there and lying there and sitting down in a totally relaxed state, and then we agree on a certain time and we start the session then. And when you're actually working yourself, what, are you working on a model or what are you working on? Yes, I can make up a model, sometimes you can make up a model, even even without a model on the therapy table, you will still feel the different sensations in the energy field. Still feel the blockages in the area as you're moving around. So once you have a rough idea of where the head, the shoulders, the arms, the hips, the legs are, the feet, I would find certain blockages just in certain areas and just keep working on them just to try and relax, release the blockage and then the person's natural healing looks after the rest. And can you sense when you've released this blockage that you're talking about? So you're talking about a sensation. I presume you're feeling the sensation in your hands. Yeah. Can anybody feel these sensations? Yes, yes, everybody can. Everybody right. Everybody can. You and can you, you? can you show me? Yes, yes please do. So just rub your hands. Will I do this? Yes, you yeah. could do it as well. Okay. Nice and fast together, just like to that. build up the heat. That's you it. Rub your hands hard against each other. Yep. Yeah, okay. Now when they're nice and warm. Yeah, they're feeling warm. Just take your hands apart. Nice and gentle. Yes. And I just pull them in. Just feel a little sensation. Well, I'm beginning to feel a kind of a tingling sensation feel between the hands. There. You might feel a little bubble. Yes. That's your energy field, that little bubble. I remember putting my hand on, on the screen of a TV once and I could feel, this, uh, could feel the same yeah. sort of tingling yeah. feeling against the, the screen. Yeah. It's almost like, like a magnet, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And wh what am I actually feeling there? What you're feeling is your own energy field there. Right, so my aura as yes. such, my and energy. And it's scientifically proven we have an energy field around oh, okay. us. So it definitely does exist. Just feel a little bubble. 
I can I can feel that. Yeah. And is there any distance? If I take my hands out further, will I still feel it? You still feel it, yes. Oh, I can feel it yeah. still there, yes. Yeah. yeah. Particularly if I move my hands inwards, I can I yeah. can feel it. Yeah. But we it's very a, subtle, isn't it? It is. It is. We all have a very large energy field around us. Yes. So we have, and that's how disease and ailments happen. Is just blockages yeah. into that energy field. And, and can I feel your energy yes. field? Yes. Right. So will I move my hands or, and you keep yours still or what way will we do you it? You keep your hands still. Okay, I keep mine still. Okay, right. And you. Oh, wow. It's the same as if I was using my own two hands. Yeah. And just move back further now. And is this... Now I'll let you move yours towards yeah. mine. I can still feel that. Okay. Yeah. Feel the tingle. Yes. Yeah. And my finger's starting to twitch. Yeah, I can see your fingers twitching yeah. there. That's amazing. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. So anybody can do this. Anybody can do it. Right, this is not a gift. This is not yeah. something you're born with, a special gift. This is all something we can all learn. Everybody can do yeah. this. Yeah. That is just astonishing. Coming back to uh, using bioenergy on on joints, if I have a shoulder pain, for instance, yeah. right? What, what's the, how would you approach it? If, if, if I come to you with, uh, with a shoulder problem, is there, is there a certain set of protocols or techniques, or do you just go straight for the shoulder? Or is, is, how long, for instance, how long is a session? Normally, a session lasts an hour. The first session is a little bit longer because we fill out a consultation form, so it gives me an idea of the client's medical history. Okay, and how long, how many sessions then would the normal person have, or is there a minimum amount? There's a minimum of around five sessions. Okay. With the first three sessions just a couple of days apart, we'll say a Monday, a Thursday, a Monday. Yes. And then we can have a week apart after that. The session lasts for an hour. During the session, we get a full immune system boost, so we'll work on practically all of the energy field of the body. Okay. And then I will concentrate then on the specific. Yeah. It'd be a shoulder injury, there'd be back injury, it could be joint trouble, it could be tumours, it could be neurological diseases. So we would spend then roughly about a half an hour at least on. And the other half an hour, I presume there's other techniques you use? There's different techniques we use then. Uh, we use peripheral protocols which works on going up along, we'll say, one side of the body down the other side. What that does, that energizes the whole body. Okay. It sort of readies the body mm -hmm. before we start on the specific. So you have a, a preparation. Like exactly. A, yeah, and then you have a finishing yeah. off. Then at the end, then we just make sure the person is nice and grounded. So we have another set of protocols. Okay. And it just sort of gets them back into themselves. Just before they leave, they don't want to be too trained. And if you're working on my shoulder now, I, I do have a, a slight problem. I presume it, it, the healing doesn't take place in minutes. It can take quite, you know, this is why you do five sessions, so that you can get deeper and deeper. Exactly. With, yeah. Exactly. Your body will only allow to happen what's meant to happen. So At that moment in time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then over a period of so many sessions, you're able to go deeper and deeper and the body responds then. It does. That's why it's important of the first three sessions relatively close together because it gives the whole energy system a complete sort of shake up. It, it really is powerful. There's no okay. point in working on just one particular area of the body and the rest of the body is lagging behind. Mm -hmm. It's important to get the whole body working as one. With bioenergy you're, you're, you're doing an overall, it's the overall body you're working on yeah. along with the specific. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No point in, as you say, just working on one specific area without the rest of the body exactly. responding and kicking in. Exactly. And so if you're working on a joint, is that a particular specific that, that you have there? Yeah. For working. pains and inflammation yeah. or whatever? Even for pains, inflammation, arthritis, we right. energize the joint, so yes. we do, okay. to get the energy into the joint from different angles. Yeah. Okay. And then we do a draw-out technique, which can help release the pain from the joint. And then we use a balancing technique, which just basically balances the whole energy field around the joint. 
And this, this will work, I presume you would do this kind of work for any joint? Any joint, ankle, knee, shoulder, hips, hips. yeah, right. any joints at all. And if you're working on the back, a lot of people have lower back problems, including myself, of course. Um, what, what, how do you approach somebody with, with a back problem? What's your, your set of techniques or whatever? Normally for back problems, the client would be lying face down. And again, I use the peripheral protocol, which goes around the whole body, which sort of loosens up the muscles, energizes yeah. the cells in the body. And then I walk very gently up along the spine, placing my hand just barely touching mm -hmm. the body. And it just helps unblock the blockages the whole way up. We go up the spine on one side, come down the spine on the other side. Okay. And there's a couple of different cross flows we can do. Right just loosens out the whole area, energizes the whole area. And if there's a particular vertebrae or part of the vertebrae that's damaged or does trouble, we can just spend a little bit longer in that area. And if there's okay. any pain, we just do the draw out technique. It just helps to ease the pain. And, that's yeah. the draw out technique that you mentioned yeah. earlier on for pain and, yeah. and, and inflammation. Yeah. And what's energy boost? I was reading something in your, in your, your, your uh, curriculum vita about um, boosting the energy. That's a particular technique, I presume. There is. There's a particular technique called a full body energy boost, yes. which is very effective. So what we do is, especially for people with gangrene or things like that, somebody with bad circulation, what we actually do is we push the energy from below the feet the whole way up, just above the heart, mm. and then the heart pumps the blood sorry, back, back down, down. Yeah. and then we do the same again. Right. Push the energy up and yes. then the energy comes back down. Wow. So we do that usually about 50 times right. and it helps circulate the blood and energy throughout the whole body. Okay, I presume it would be good for circulation if, if you're able to get up and down the entire Very body good. down as far as the feet. Very good. Yeah. Very good. And would that help the immune system as well? Yeah, we have one for the immune system we can use on the back which starts from just below the base of the spine yes. and again we push the energy up yeah. up as far as just above the shoulders yes. and again the energy and blood comes back down and okay. then we keep pushing up and we do that around 30 times that's very good for all the internal organs the right. spine vertebrae all that type of thing and with regards to um people coming to, what do people mostly come with do you find or is, is 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 there any one type of injury or sickness or health problem that mental health fibromyalgia is getting to be a very common issue as well digestive trouble as we were saying earlier about the chakra system the solar plexus chakra isn't working properly it can lead to a lot of digestive trouble as well the emotions with the solar plexus is fear, anger and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So someone that has a lot of anxiety in their life, a lot of fear, a lot of anger, sometimes it can come from the solar plexus. So that's another, that's a very common one also. From a physical point of view, what would most of your clients come with? Physical, I suppose, fibromyalgia, uh, cancer, I work with people with MS also. And uh, yeah, they would probably be the main ones. You've been at this a good number of years yeah. yourself. What, what, what kind of stories could you share about working with bioenergy with, with humans? Uh, very lucky to have some good results with seeing tumours shrink. As I said before, a lady had MS. She was told if she didn't get any treatment within six months, she would be blind in one eye and wheelchair bound. Right. And I actually just met her there a couple of weeks ago. So I did after four years. And she had actually walked three kilometers into where I'd met her. Mm. And she's totally pain free. Right. In a fantastic place. Uh, mental health issues as well. There's a lot of people get great benefit from it. Sports injuries. Yes. People who would have ligament trouble hamstring, double, things like that, it yes. really brings on, speeds up the process of healing. So okay. And we say mental health now, you're talking what, what type of... Mental health, health mentally, de depression, 
depression. Like yeah. That, yeah. Okay. And yeah. what would you do for somebody with? with Again, I would have certain set amount of protocols for that. So okay. Was, so we work, and even sometimes just a good chat, a nice chat with someone, works mm. wonders too. Make right. them feel comfortable. Make them feel that there is a chance of getting better. And you combine sound sometimes with the bioenergy, yes. do you? Yeah. How would you use that? Or well, I've the crystal singing bowls, which I see you have here as well, John. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has, we'll say, again, go back to the solar plexus issue. If someone has digestive trouble, I can work on the crystal bowl that resonates with the solar plexus. Okay. I'll even just to play that note just for a couple of minutes. Yes. That note will start to work on the issue in the solar plexus. Right. So can. I also have Tibetan bowls as well, which you can use just around the energy field and it just sort of breaks up any blockages okay. and it's very soothing as well to listen to, very soothing. And would you use bioenergy first of all, would you go through the whole bioenergy session and then start uh, adding sound occasionally? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is exactly what I do. Towards the end of the session I would use the sound okay. and it just sort of brings the person, it can be very grounding as well. I also use gongs as well and I've this a Pisces sun gong and an earth gong which is a very grounding sound and towards the end of the session I do my own grounding protocols for the client okay. and I also played the gong as well and it just sort of brings them back. If they were to be asked what's, what's an ocean bioenergy healing session like? Yeah. What, how would they describe it, do you think? They don't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to go home? No. <laughs> no, they want to just stay there. They just want to stay, they just want to lie down, and they just absolutely love it. Now, in some cases, it can bring up emotions. Yeah. In some cases, it can bring up a little bit of pain, but that's just blockages leaving the energy system. Yeah. So it is, but most, nearly in all cases, everybody feels very, very relaxed, very grounded after a session. I had a, a couple of sessions myself and I felt lighter yeah. uh, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Is that another thing that people feel? They, they, yeah. They feel taller. Oh, they feel taller? Yes, yes. Lighter and taller. Yeah, yeah. And not want to go home. No. <laughs> well, listen, Graham, it's been absolutely a pleasure hearing some of the amazing stories that you have there and describing what the, the bioenergy does and continued success with your own bioenergy uh, treatment. Thank you, John. Therapy sessions, all right. My guest was Graham Goff from County Mead in Ireland, uh, a very successful bioenergy therapist. And so we leave it at that for this podcast, and we'll see you on the next show. Thank you very much from John Dunhu. Bye-bye for now. Hello, and welcome to another podcast. I'm John Dunhu from HealingCoursesOnline.com. And with me again, I'm delighted to welcome back Graham Goff, all the way from County Meath in Ireland. You're very welcome Thank again, you, Graham. Yeah. I love chatting to this man. He's such an expert in sound healing. He's an expert in bioenergy healing. I'm per personally very interested in what we have to talk about today because we're going to be talking about sound healing. And not just sound healing for working with somebody else who may have a health issue or a health problem, but also working with sound for your own self-healing, which I think is the reason you got into it in the first case, Graham, anyway. You can use all of what we'll be talking about today for self-healing, yeah, correct? Totally. All the instruments I have are just a small selection of them here. I also have a 38-inch Paiste Sun Gong. I have sound creation, earth gong, I've different types of chimes, I've the seven crystal bowls, I have three Tibetan bowls, I have an ocean drum, I have more things than I know. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned you've seven of these crystal bowls. Why would you need seven crystal bowls? Seven because each one is tuned to each one of the seven main chakras. Okay. So the one I brought today is C, which is tuned to the root chakra and I also have one G which is tuned to the throat chakra. Okay and C and G work well together I presume? They do, they're perfect fifths and they're in perfect harmony and they're lovely, we'll play the two of them there later on. For the benefit of people wondering what does a perfect fifth means, um, I, I play guitar myself 
So if somebody out there plays um, an instrument and plays a guitar, they know that two, any two strings, and not all two strings, but we'll say two strings on a guitar like E and A work well together because they're a fifth notes apart. They're five notes apart, so E and A works very well together. A and D works very well together. D and G works very well together. And B and E works well together. And of course C and G work very well together. And that's what you've just mentioned, the crystal bowls are in the keys of C and G. Yeah. And the reason that, that you, you pick perfect fifths is because they harmonize together. So those two notes will sound in tune. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. If somebody is singing and they're out of tune or their instrument is out of tune, it means that they, they, they really need to retune exactly. and, uh, to harmonious notes. Yeah. All those instruments you mentioned for sound healing, would you use all of them? in a sound healing session? I would over the course of a sound session which can last anything from an hour up to two or three hours I definitely would use the model for what it does is it gives a, a great variation of frequency okay. during a session and the fact that we're all made up of frequency and vibration the different sounds affect different parts of the body maybe on an emotional level spiritual level a mental level a physical level and the more frequency and vibration we can get into that session, the more work we're getting done on the energy field and on the person themselves. Basically, you could use the gong, you could use Tibetan singing bowls, you could use tuning forks, yeah. and use them all in different ways at different times during a session. Basically, what you're trying to do is cover all the frequencies of the body, isn't exactly, that it? Exactly, exactly. The gongs are very powerful because you have so many overtones and frequencies mm -hmm. coming from them, as you have a, a gong here. And what it does is, it gives so many sounds that the brain can't really listen to them all. And the brain just totally submits and just surrenders. And after a couple of minutes, it brings the brain to the theta level where the best form of healing takes place and that is a very very good place to be and you're not fully asleep you're not awake but you're just it's just like you're floating in space yeah a lovely experience obviously for the person receiving it yeah. and of course when you're using this as a therapist you're getting self-healing yourself exactly exactly it's my favorite form of self-healing to go into the therapy room for an hour and start playing the gongs, the different bowls, because as a bioenergy therapist myself, it's important that you keep your own energy levels right, your emotions in check and keep everything right. So I, I absolutely love the sound therapy and I find it very, very therapeutic for myself as well. A typical one for yourself, self-healing, if, if you're lucky enough to have all the instruments as you have, yes. what would be a typical self-healing session for you? Well, first of all, I'd focus on my breathing, do my... T I just be more mindful of my breathing, do my diaphragmatic breathing. As I inhale, just gently push my stomach out. And then exhale, you just let it come back in. And just practice that a couple of times. It just gets me in the right place, emotionally, mentally. And just start nice and gentle then on the gongs. Just let it build up nicely. And just go with me, instinct, intuition, move on to the bowls, different chimes and that sort of thing. Just whatever I feel is the right thing to do at the time. For somebody now who is interested in self-healing and interested in self-healing using sound, they can start off with diaphragmatic breathing and then depending on what instrument they have, yeah. they can follow on with that. Yeah. For most people, you're a sound healing professional therapist. They may not necessarily need all of that. Yes. What could they start off with? I mean, basically, at the beginning. We can start off with the likes of the chimes. We have two Koshi chimes here. Koshi chimes? Yeah. Okay, let's hear how they sound. A beautiful, soft sound. Yeah, just bring it over here so I can see it. I'll let you hold that one, John. That's excellent. Okay. So, that all right. so all you do is, is rotate it slightly. Yeah, exactly. 
can be used even outside in the garden. What? Just sit under a tree with that playing, very therapeutic. So that one there is a particular set of notes and this one here then is just a slightly different set. Oh, the two together are amazing. Lovely. Yeah. I'll just let you play yours there. And then we play the two of them together. It's so relaxing, isn't it? Yeah. See, again, you have so many notes. Well, but they're beautiful tones, aren't they? Yeah. Beautiful. It's not just the notes, it's the lovely it's just a sound. sustain yeah. sound from them as well. So they're called koshis. Yeah. Where, where do these come from? Where did they originate? It's Japan, as far as I know. Right. These particular ones, yeah. And what do we have here now? We have a, a wooden frame, I presume. Yeah, it's presume like a bamboo made of... outer frame. And then inside, we have like a glass ball. Yes. Which just hits off little steel bars. And oh, just right. different. Absolutely amazing sound. And particularly the two. You've obviously picked two that... that go well together. So anybody could basically buy these. They're, exactly. they're probably not that expensive. And play them. Right. Even the wind can play them. Actually. Even the wind, <laughs> wind can play them for you. Don't even have to move no. your hand. <laughs> so we'll say somebody wanting to start off with self-healing for their own relaxation, yes. for their own mindfulness, even to do a meditation or prior to a meditation. Exactly. To center themselves, bring them into the moment their diaphragmatic breathing then start playing these yeah, yeah yeah and it's a good it's nice too especially with the gongs so it can be it can be played very softly and it can also be played very powerfully yeah so it's nice to have something like this to contrast right it's it's delicate and exactly. it's subtle and it just brings the mind back to a different place a different place it correct just totally relaxes again okay You wouldn't want to speak while that's going on, would you? <laughs> you're nearly, you're near, <laughs> nearly disturbing the peace. <laughs> that's excellent. We can put that back, back there again. That's excellent. So you mentioned the crystal bowls earlier on, Graham. Um, you would use those for for um, for healing particularly for the chakras. Exactly. Yeah. This one here now is for the root chakras and the key of C. Okay. So any issues that the client would have with the root chakra, maybe mortal fear if they've got real intense, strong, powerful fear they experienced, using this bowl alone will try and just release Help the Help to release the blockages in, yeah, there. In that area. Right, right. And it's very therapeutic. Now I also have... I also have another bowl here, which okay. is in the key of G. In the key of G. Which is this the one you mentioned um, for the throat chakra? Exactly. What sort of issues would somebody have with the throat chakra? Did with the do? throat chakra, if someone has a problem expressing themselves, also if the chakra isn't properly balanced, it can affect the organs in that area. Yes. So it can lead to throat infections, thyroid issues things like that and it's just it just helps and it, it does change it changes the mood of a person especially around the throat chakra it just helps them express themselves more if they have certain things to say that they're not saying it just helps them be able to express themselves and whereas at another time they might have sort of held their tongue and not express how they really how they really feel exactly. and 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 what you're saying is that it's important that we speak out if there's something we need to say. Exactly. That's that's clearing and and uh, the un it's helping to unblock blockages. Exactly. At an energy level yeah. around the throat chakra. Yeah. That alone is a massive part of healing. 
just expressing yourself. So it's important for, for somebody to express how they're feeling and be able to say uh, what, what, what's bothering them if there is exactly. something. And that's, as you said earlier on, communicating and, uh, and talking and speaking out and allowing the person, the other person to speak, of course, as well, conversing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's there to help work at an energy level and in working at an energy level on the throat chakra can then help the physical. Exactly. It'll start working on, we'll say, it can work on an emotional level as well and physical level and it, it just, the sounds from it will just penetrate the energy field. Whatever is needed, the sound will give. So let's hear how, how these sound. So you, I, I see you have special beaters there for them. Yeah. So again, we'll start off with the C and then we can move on to the G and then we can play them together in perfect fit. Okay, just go back there again now, Graham. So there's obviously two sounds you can create. So you can tap it and get one sound. Yes. So, so just let's hear that with both of them there. It's just tapping them for a start. is beautiful isn't it yeah. and then you are starting to rub the outside edges of them is that what you call it yeah just want to be even nice and gently yeah. around the air rim astonishing that it's still going on. It's, it's such a long, long sustain from it. Fantastic sustain. Just let one fade out and the other fade in and then we can hear the, the two different sounds there. Uh, let's see what they're like. Okay, so there we have the C. Sounds you, you you think it, uh, they're um, sounds of the universe, yeah. planetary sounds, absolutely beautiful. Now I've got to ask you about this gadget you brought along here. I've never seen anything in my life like this. This is, I don't know what it is even called. What what is this? You better tell me about this one, Graham. This is an Indian instrument called a shruti box. Called a? A shruti box. A shruti box? Yes. Now, so what we have here, we have different keys which are on a piano. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have the white keys along the bottom, piano keys and the black ones on top. Now what it also does is it works as a bellows. Yes. So it's basically just a matter of squeezing in the bellows and then the notes, it will start to play the particular notes. It gives okay, a beautiful so drone sound. Okay, just leave it sideways for a moment and let's, let's see the, the, the bellows working. It's 
set. Isn't that gorgeous? It's almost like um, almost like an accordion. It is. Yeah, very I play the accordion myself now. The the button key accordion and uh, the sound on the left hand side that accompanies your playing has sound not unlike that. Right. Um, it sounds a little like a harmonium as well. Yeah. 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 The Indian harmonium. Yeah. Yeah, very effective and very popular in the sound therapy as well, especially right. when it's used with the bowls as well. I can actually tune it as well. Can certain you? notes to use my we use with the gong as well, and okay. it's, it's very nice. But what I can do now is I can change the notes on it, and we can use it with the two bowls. Mm -hmm. So you can see changing the notes. As you can see, I have a load of stickers here. Yes, because okay. I don't play the piano. <laughs> so we go for the C and the G which are in perfect fifths. So what I'll do is I'll play the shruti box first yes. and then we can bring the bowls in. Amazing sound, absolutely amazing sound. So obviously somebody um, who would go for a, a sound healing treatment to, to Graham's therapy centre gets a, gets a lovely load of sound. <laughs> mm? Yeah, definitely. A lot of variation there and beautiful constantly, mixture. Yeah, constantly trying to add more and more and just to get, just to get a nice variation variation of sounds to me is the whole thing yeah 
exactly over over a healing session they can yeah. the terribly the client coming experiences all the different sounds all the different frequencies which which covers basically you know all the frequencies of the body I presume exactly. that's exactly. the idea we're all made up of frequency and vibration every disease every illness has a particular frequency and vibration to it right so if we're walking through sounds we're hitting on all damn issues we're so hitting yeah. on all the frequencies yes yeah we're hitting on a lot of issues. Okay. Well, Graham, it's been a pleasure listening to the beautiful sounds that you brought along today and continued success with your own therapy and your Thanks own very much. journey of, of sound healing, which I'm sure hasn't come to an end. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> sure, there's more, more little goodies on the way at yeah, some yeah. stage. And don't forget to come back and show us whatever you've got. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, thank my, my guest, Graham Goff from County Mead, Ireland. And uh, if you live in that area or any part of Ireland and you want to make it to uh, Graham's Therapy Centre, you feel free to contact us through the Healing Centre here and we'll be delighted to give you his contact details. Until we meet again, John Dunne Hussein, all the best for now and we'll see you on the next podcast. Thank you. Hello and welcome to our podcast. I'm John Donoghue from HealingCoursesOnline.com and I'm delighted to welcome back once again my good friend Graham Goff, all the way from County Mead in Ireland, a famous town called Slane. And today I'd like to talk to Graham about something he's doing all over Ireland. You're spreading your wings now and you're doing sound healing therapy in a lot of different locations. That's, that's the, the new plan that you're at at the moment, Graham. Yeah, that's just working on at the moment. A workshop coming up soon now in Derry with Laurie Gallagher and definitely hoping to spread out a couple of more places around the country. Okay. At the moment, I'm doing this in Raharney on a Wednesday night. We do slaying on a Thursday night. I woke up in Coolmine Therapy Centre on a Friday and it's definitely going down very well. There's a great demand for it so and it's something I absolutely love doing so hopefully do a lot more of it in the future. So initially Graham just for me to, to get my head around it initially you learned all about sound healing then you set up your own therapy centre and you, you set that up initially doing bioenergy. Yes. You studied the ocean bioenergy method yes. and that was going very well for you for yeah. a number of years and you continue to do that. Yeah. And then you decided to integrate sound healing in with that. What made you decide to, to go into the area of sound healing, to adding that to your bioenergy? Again, we are, we're all frequency and vibration. And with the bioenergy, you're working on the vibration of the energy field and also with the sound. So it's a perfect match together, it really works good together. So, so it's, it's, it, I always had a great interest in sound and I think everybody loves a particular type of music. Mm -hmm. And again, certain notes, certain frequencies resonate better with some people than others. And that's to just really, really enjoy the sound. I find it very therapeutic. A lot of the clients I've worked with have found it extremely therapeutic as well. They don't have to speak about their issues. They can just go in, lie down, and the sound just works wonders. So initially you started off doing the sound healing in your own therapy room. Yeah. But then you had this idea of creating a sound healing workshop in different areas uh, or else or, uh, we'll say going to a different town setting up all your sound healing equipment yeah. so what had happened there was what somebody had obviously asked you would would you come to another area and and do your sound healing yeah a couple of people have asked me to do in different areas so what I usually do is I arrive, bring all the sound therapy equipment of gongs, chimes, crystal bowls Tibetan bowls, loads of different shruti box, different instruments, and I have camp mats. So we come up and bring out up all the camp mats, a couple of blankets, set up all the camp mats, set up all the gear. Everybody just comes in. If they want to bring a pillow themselves, if they want to bring an extra blanket or whatever, 
Some people bring sleeping bags, just whatever makes them more comfortable. In Slane, it's a lovely place. We have bean bags there as well, so it's very, very comfortable. And uh, people just come in, they just lie down, just relax. And an hour and a quarter later, they wake up <laughs> a different person. <laughs> oh, so try and describe for me what a typical uh, hour and a half session would be now. A typical session would be what so many people come. You could have 10 people, 20 yeah, people, whatever yeah, they come. Yeah. yeah. And they lie down. They lie down. Okay, in a big circle or what way is it? We usually, it depends on the room we have. And the beauty of the sound, especially the gongs, is it doesn't matter even if someone is maybe 20 feet away. Mm -hmm. They will still feel the vibration going through the room. Okay. So they can. So with the gongs, you can play them as soft and as gentle as you want, or you can make a more crashing sound. And it's when that crashing sound comes that the vibrations will actually travel through the room. They'll travel through the floor. Okay. If you have a timber floor. Yes. And you will actually feel the sensations going through your body as well. So we also, the likes of the Koshi chimes, which is more of a softer tone. And it's good just to get a whole mix. Yeah. So I try and use all the instruments I have. So the gongs, the bowls, the more frequencies I can use during a session the more benefits people will get okay. from the therapy itself. Right, for whatever issues they're coming exactly. with, be it physical, emotional, or mental, mental or spiritual, spiritual whatever. Yeah. yeah, they might find themselves in a bad place spiritually, might find themselves a little bit soft. Yes. And uh, it, just, it just sort of, the frequencies of vibration just go through the body and just start working on all of the energy field. And you find the same people will turn up each week Definitely. Week after week yes. after week, it's yeah. their time out, it's their sound healing session, and yeah. they'll come each week. Yeah, people, some people find it very addictive. It really bothers them now if they miss a week. If they miss <laughs> a week, yes. It really does bother them. Now, the sound can bring up emotions too. So right. It can yeah. just store up a little bit of emotion, maybe just issues there that people haven't dealt with. And it can just bring up a little bit of emotion. Sometimes it can bring up a little bit of pain because the frequencies, every disease, every ailment has a particular frequency mm -hmm. or a vibration. Okay. So the sound can sometimes just bring up a little bit of pain, a little bit of soreness if someone has arthritis. Yes. They might just feel it around the knee yes. at a certain part of the session because whatever particular instrument I'm playing at the time mm -hmm. could be activating that particular problem. H health problem, exactly. okay, yes. But again, the session is over pain just goes away. It's like they talk about in healing that you might get a little worse before you get better. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. A healing crisis. A healing so. crisis. Yeah. And then at the end of a session, would you, would, do people like to sit around and, and talk about what they've, they've experienced? Yeah, it's, it's very important with the sound to have a little chat with people. Just a brief explanation before we start but it's important after especially for people who have experienced it for the first time because sometimes people can feel it maybe a little bit overwhelming and yeah. it's important that they can say that yeah. some people can find it very very relaxing yeah. some people they might bring up if someone broke their ankle 20 years ago they might feel their ankle getting a little bit sore or agitated yeah. yes. or if you're working on we'll say old scar tissue if there was emotional stuff, it can also bring up that. Some people can just feel a little bit emotional, they might just shed an odd tear. And it's important just to go around everybody and just check up on them. Just reassure them that whatever they felt is totally natural. And was right for the moment. Exactly. It was yeah. what they needed at that time. Yes. And they talk about shedding a tear, like it, it, that's clearing in a way. That, exactly. That's, yeah. Because if you don't if if you don't allow what needs to come out, there's no room for the, the, the healing and the joy and the happiness to get in. Exactly. So sometimes exactly you have to clear out the press, clear out the, the wardrobe yeah. as it were. And it's just the same with the bioenergy. The bioenergy is basically unblocking blockages in the energy field. So your own healing works. Yeah. And the same way with the sound. The sound is just unblocking blockages in the energy field. 
and then your own healing takes place then as well. So they're so, very similar, okay. even though they're completely different systems. Right. But what they do to the energy field is very, very similar. Because obviously the body heals itself and yeah. the body wants to be healthy. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, what am I doing that's blocking my body from being healthy? What am I doing that's stopping it from being absolutely 100% healthy? Exactly. And usually, and you know, not very often, it's, it's what we're doing that's preventing it. It could be foods, it could be our sure. lifestyle, it could be our environment. Yeah. Or it could be our own blocks that, that, that are preventing us from being healthy. Yeah, our own emotions mm. can cause an awful lot of issues. They say if you buy a car and you want it to last for 100 years, you take great, great care of it. Exactly. And it's the same with the body. Exactly. Like We have a body and if we want it to last 100 years, we have to put the right oils into it and the right exactly. water into it and the right food into it yeah. and drive it very, very carefully. But how many of us do that? Very few. <laughs> yeah. how, how many of us switch off our engines at seven o'clock in the evening? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still revving up there until God yeah. knows what time at night, and we expect that each day it's going to start up and, and keep going for a hundred years. So, yeah. it, it isn't it all down to how you take care of yourself? It is. You have to be very mindful of that too. Yeah. You have to make that conscious decision and say, well, right, I'm given this amount of time for myself every day every week maybe even five minutes yeah. just to sit down meditate a little bit just listen to a little bit of music but that five minutes can make such a difference to the rest of your day yeah. how important is me time oh 100 percent because yeah. we've all we've all only the one me <laughs> yeah that's true we've only the one me and, and we really have to look after it and we really need me time exactly and how many people can say well me time is from six till seven every evening. Yeah. I mean, how often does anybody really fit in me time? And yeah. isn't, that, isn't that really the secret to self-healing? It is, it is. Spend time with your family and just get back to, get back to being yourself. Yeah, and spending time doing what, what is best for you, what exactly. you, following your own intuition or following your own gut feeling. Exactly, whatever works with your frequency or your vibration. Let it be swimming, let it be canoeing, let it be listening to music, let it be exercise, whatever works for you. It's just so important. A lot of people think, well, when I retire, I'm going to do all the things that I really like. What, how, how do you respond to that? <laughs> it doesn't always work out like that, but it is, it is important. I suppose people have more time on their hands then and it is important again that they just find what really sort of floats their boat mm. and just keep working on that yeah but life is now isn't it oh, life is yeah, now it is. and it's a matter of living your life as you want to live it now because today is your life oh, without a doubt. lot of people think that that their life begins when they're 50 or 60 or yeah. 70 and they've finished off with this particular job or whatever else they've had or the kids yeah. have grown up now I can start living but isn't it important do you think to that that you 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 live your life as you want to live it while you're living your life while your your children are growing up while you're still in this job is to do the things that you you like to do for yourself I mean surely that's that's self-healing too it is without doubt because the present moment we're in that's the only time we have full control over a situation correct we can't control what happened in the past and we can't control what's coming to us because we don't know what it is yet exactly so make every day which means you have to change your lifestyle and just try and be a little bit more in the moment, be more mindful of what's going on. And if you can look after the moment and be contented and happy and grateful in the moment, well then the future will look after itself. So the past is history and that's gone. Yeah. We can do nothing about that. Yeah. The future, even five minutes from now, yeah. is speculation. That hasn't happened yet, yeah. let alone next year and, and 10 years from now. Yeah. So you can only really deal with, with the moment. Yeah. Isn't this very much what meditation is about and exactly. mindfulness is to be in the moment and try and be in the moment each moment, yeah. every moment. And it's the same way with the sound. The sound really focuses the mind in the moment. So it's because you have so many overtones and frequencies, the mind is trying to listen to them and it stops the chatter, the inner chatter, yes. because it's focusing outwardly yes. on what is in 
in the room was around pairs and the different sounds, the different frequencies, the mind is constantly trying to take in and listen. So that inner chatter then is just put to one side. Yes. And that's why the sound therapy is so powerful. If you can get your brain wave to the theta level, so the delta is when you're asleep, you can come back down to the theta level. It's just like you're floating in space. Mm -hmm. And that's when the best healing is taking place. Okay. And you've actually no thoughts. You're just in a, a, a beautiful, blissful place. You're not awake and you're not asleep. You're just sort of in the middle. I remember on a previous podcast, you played uh, the Tibetan bowl and you played the gongs. And one thing that I noticed based on just what you've just said is that as soon as you tap a Tibetan bowl, your future and your past disappear. Exactly. It very much brings you into the present, doesn't it? Totally, totally. And that's just, the, that's basically the power of sound therapy in a nutshell. It, well, there we are. What, what we'll do is, I'll just get you to take that there now, and we'll just, off the top of our heads, we're just going to tap, tap it. There's, there's something there we can just tap it with. And right here and now, we'll just tap that and hear the sound it creates. So once you tapped that and it started to ring out, my whole focus went onto that bowl. My, so you're, you're right. My entire focus was on what's after happening now. It's like somebody tapping their hands and, and calling attention. You know, it's bang, it's, it's the bowl. And you've, you've just got to listen to it. It doesn't allow you to, to think about the path. You, you don't start thinking about what happened yesterday or do I have to buy the paper or something on the way home. It, it's, you're tuned in with this bowl right, right away. So in a way, somebody could buy a Tibetan bowl, just one bowl like that, yeah. use it to tap themselves. Exactly. And, totally, and that's, that's yeah. self-healing. Total self healing. They could hold that, they could bring it into an office, they could bring it into whatever work place they're, they're in, um, or go into a room on their own and just tap that for a few moments, and there they are, they're in the present. Yeah. And another very key thing as well is when we tap the bowl and we li listen to the sound die off, our focus actually increases. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're hearing your bliss. Yes. Your focus increases because you're trying to listen to the last little bit yeah. that's there. And it gets to a stage then where you don't know if you're hearing it. Or, or you're not stopped. hearing it. Yeah. And at that particular time, you are totally focused. We'll actually do that now. We'll actually do that. You've reminded me of something. So we have, we have a number of tuning forks here. And we just... We'll just We'll just see if we've got um, perfect fifths here. There's, there's a B. Is that a B there? That's a B. B and an E. So actually, we've got between the two, two of those. So we'll just make sure that they're. So I'm going to let you demonstrate the, the perfect fifths on each side. And as you were saying, what, what we'll do is we'll let them ring out, but as you were saying, it's to focus on, on the sound that's dying out, exactly. not just on the sound itself, to focus on the silence that's created at the end. Exactly. Yeah, okay, so if we do that so. So just do that one more time and, and demonstrate for our viewers, they would be holding two tuning forks at each ear this time. Yeah? Okay. And perfect fifths, which is a B and an E, or A and D, C and G, um, D or D and G would also be perfect fifths. Yeah. So once they're perfect fifths apart, they're in harmony, and this is the harmony you're, you're trying to create yeah. in, in the brain itself. Okay. Yeah.
And in that total silence at the end, that's bliss. That's bliss. You're, you're trying to focus on nothingness, really. Exactly. And you're trying to, can I still hear it, can I not? So as you say, your, your, your full focus is, is on the silence at the end. Yeah. And tell me, Graham, when you're doing a, a sound healing session, um, either in your therapy room or in one of these workshops that you do throughout the country, how important is your intent as you're actually playing those instruments? It's very important. If I rush into a sound therapy session and I'm after getting a puncture on the way, um, yeah. there's a lot of anger inside or frustration or whatever, as soon as I start, the same with the bioenergy. It's in my energy field. And as soon as I start, it's nearly amplified out through the sound. Yeah. And I can guarantee you that no one of them people will come back next week for the following session. They won't be back. No, it's no. very Because important. they'll have picked up the bad vibes that you had, the frustrations that you had, maybe exactly. getting held up on the road, yes. trying to get to where you're going. And all of that frustrations, you're not really focused on what you're doing. So you're, you're still stuck in the problem that you had on the roadway or your, yeah. what's going on in your life. And that comes across in your music yeah. isn't that absolutely amazing that that when you play an instrument it's it must be the same with a musician yeah a musician who is having difficulties in their own life whatever they're creating musically is going to come out in their music yeah. on the other hand if if they've got a, a peaceful personality and a peaceful persona and what they're creating inside of their head is is being released through their music, it creates a completely different vibration. So it's not just the musical notes or the instrument, it's a lot got to do with the person who's creating it all, hasn't it? Yeah, it's a lot got to do with intent and it goes back to, if you're carrying down frustrations during a session, it goes back to your just in the past. Mm -hmm. You're not living in the moment. Yeah. Because in the moment, what happened in the past isn't there anymore. Yes. It's just a memory. Yes. So, so if you're not living in the moment as a, as a therapist, either doing the bioenergy or doing the sound healing, it's not going to help the person that you're working on or the person who's listening to your music. It's exactly. not going to help them. Exactly. Because it's not been created yeah. by the creator in the moment. Exactly. That's mm. exactly it. The therapist, number one, has to be in the right place to facilitate a session. So it yeah. all starts with you. Exactly. Exactly. And tell me, are you doing any other workshops throughout Ireland? Yeah, we have a workshop coming up now at Laura Gallagher up in Derry. They'll be coming up now in, I think it's two weeks' time. Okay. And it's something we intend doing for the next couple of months. On a regular doing, basis? Yeah, okay. definitely every two months or so. Uh, there's a lot of interest up there, so we're probably branching out to different places yes. up there as well. I continue to do... In, Maharney there on a Wednesday, slain on the Thursday night, and Cool Mine, which has been going on now for the last good few months, up in Dublin on a Friday. What type of age group would attend these workshops, these sound healing workshops? Every single age. Really? Yes. Every single age. Uh, especially up in Cool Mine, in the therapy centre, sometimes we would have children in with the mothers. Sometimes we could have a baby in with right. the mother. And naturally I wouldn't play as loud or anything like that. And yeah. there's nothing as nice to see a mother and a baby snuggled mm. up in a fleece and the two of them fast asleep together. Oh, it's it must be a lovely scene. It's fantastic. Yes. It's fantastic. And she would come across each week now. She will attend each week and yeah. bring her baby with yeah. her to be part of of exactly. this, she, introducing a, her children to sound healing. Exactly. It's a fantastic made. bonding process yes. for a mother and a child, for them to experience the whole thing together. Mm. Lovely. On a previous podcast, I remember you mentioning something about a dog that you were working on that, that, that was very, very ill. Yeah. And you were doing distant healing on yeah. the dog. So you were working with a piece of its hair, I presume, yeah. and a photograph at a distance. Yeah. How did the dog respond? Because I know it had, the dog was supposed to have cancer at the time and kid, was it problems? Kidney problems, liver problems, it wasn't eaten. The 
kidney problem seems to have sorted itself out now. The kidneys are back working. The liver is back working as well. And the uh, cancer hasn't spread. Has not spread? No, it hasn't okay. spread. So between myself and the vets, we're working away on that. Okay. And hopefully start reversing that now as well. That's excellent. That's yeah. a lovely, lovely way to end lovely, the podcast. Yeah. Now, it's a nice, <laughs> a nice uh, happy story like that yeah. for, for, the, for the little dog. Well, we wish the dog and its owner Definitely. well. And uh, Graham, thank you very much for thank joining you. with us today and, and uh, enlightening us about uh, all about the sound once again and about your workshops. And we, we wish you well with all the workshops that you're doing throughout the country. And we'd like to thank anybody who's watched and tuned in. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And it's me, John Donoghue from HealingCoursesOnline.com saying thank you very much and we'll see you on the next podcast. Thank you. <laughs>